Uh, start the evening. It is um, Monday, October 2nd. It's the uh, Moortown Select Board here at the, uh, the shop. We've got uh, uh, Robin online, otherwise the four of us uh, board members are here um, looking for um, general public comments and not seeing anyone here for that. We'll move ahead um, to uh, Cheryl and Brown, who's coming to uh, share with us the employee health insurance. Okay. So um, we've been recommended to go with the same plan that we have now. Um, the rates are lower than MVP, and not only that, but we continue. Okay. We are continuing to get a reimbursement. I just got notified today that we're getting back uh, $9,860.67. So it basically covers the 11.3% increase, which is $10,650. So, well, it's $1,000, a little over $1,000 difference. So I'd like to ask the board if they would make a motion for me to go ahead and sign these and send them off to Craig. He did do his comparisons. Okay. Um, I'll make that motion. That we uh, renew the health insurance in the cross. Second. Say a second. Uh, Sherlyn, so there's no changes with coverage for anyone across the board? Nothing. Not, everything will stay exactly the same. Everything will stay the same. Mm -hmm. That's I, was, I was pretty impressed with this. Yeah, no, it's quite good. It's nice that the savings certainly um, <laughs> you employees being healthy people is yeah. nice. Um, is there any other discussion, Don? You have anything to say? No, it sounds good. So, uh, I have your permission to go ahead and sign these. Not yet. Um, let me hold a vote. Okay. <laughs> All in favor, vote aye. 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 Now you can go ahead and sign. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Shirley. Somebody grab a copy of that Google Group. What's that? You have the Blue Cross. These. Thank you, Sasha. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. You want that one? You can have it. Okay. All right. Um, now we're waiting for Ray to get online. Ray is supposed to get online to um, bring us up to date on the stormwater project. Let's just wait a couple minutes, and if not, we can go ahead and um, the reports, communications. I don't want to get too into stuff because we've got Dave, and then we have um, other guests at seven o'clock. I just text Brad. You just texted him. Okay. Hi, Angela. How are you? Good, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm well, thank you. Um, I'm Peter over in Peter Miller, all right. Hi, John. Hi, Angela. How are you? Not too bad. How are yourself? Not too bad. Don? Can I? Hello? Hi, hey. hey, Peter. You know, I'm truly sorry that you guys and God need to be burdened with this because we can handle this. The only thing that I asked last select board was please have Richard Valentinetti and me going, and you okayed it. And we got a report. Well, you got it. I sent it to you guys. Yeah. You know, I don't understand this. We are here for, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, diplomacy. Yeah, because well, you, see, you see the thing. It, yeah, why don't hold on, Angelo, because we're on the agenda for seven. I don't want to get into the discussion because yeah, that way it'll yeah. kind of. Because this is being videotaped. I mean, it, it can go out, and the more town comments don't buy there. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> we will. Uh, That's a good, good. We like diplomacy. <laughs> That's what we, we're all about diplomacy, right? We certainly try. All right, Ray is getting on here, so we'll uh, I'll admit him. So Ray is going to give us uh, an update on the stormwater project. If you guys want to look out the window, um, yeah. certainly it looks pretty nice. Hey, Ray, how are you tonight? Yeah. Hey, Ray. 
<laughs> what, what'd you do to yourself, right? Oh, no. Uh, I think I uh, went to, <clears throat> went to a, a football game over in um, Syracuse over the weekend. And was walking to the stadium and just uh, caught my foot on a bad piece of sidewalk and did a bad tumble. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. yeah. So did you yeah. see the football game? <laughs> No, missed that game completely, but we were able to go to the Bills game yesterday. But, uh, yeah, we missed the, the Clemson-Syracuse uh, game. They went. I was in the emergency room at the <laughs> university. Oh, that's too bad, right? Yeah. How are you feeling okay, though? Yeah, yeah. It was a little bit scary, you know. I mean, I I, I thought I tore my tendons in my fingers, but turns out they were just dislocated. So, um, that they had to stitch them up and stuff. and. You know, it's just one of those freak accidents. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 49 yeah. years construction and I've never, never been in an emergency room. <laughs> and just that walking, <laughs> walk to a football game. Walk, walking around and just gets you, right? <laughs> oh, well, could be worse, right? Well, we're glad you're well uh, or on the mend, anyways. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I don't know if you've been over here, but the, the project looks, looks real nice. It looks like they're almost complete. I'll go ahead and let you uh, have the floor and uh, let us know what's going on. Yeah, so uh, as you know, the weather has been pretty dry the last few weeks, and that has turned things around a lot for the contractor. Um, I did not get over there today. He was supposed to finish up around the school, and we're going to have a kind of like a final walkthrough before he does the final seating uh, sometime this week. So, uh, uh, he's supposed to start on the last bit of drainage, uh, uh, you know, um, this week by the Browns. Uh, he's supposed to get that uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, you know, it looks like, uh, you know, within the next two weeks, he'll pretty much be done over here. Uh, I did have a question. Is John, John's there, right? He is. I am. Yeah. So um, there's a light, there's part of the project was uh, doing a sidewalk up next to park parking lot and uh, there's a lilac tree there that uh, it's going to have to be moved or cut. I'm thinking we'll try to move it away from the sidewalk. If that's okay with you. Which which lilac? As you're coming up the driveway on the left hand side. Uh, oh, okay. There's yeah. a lilac tree that it's you know there's supposed to be a Part of the project is uh, like a, a walk in. It's only a gravel sidewalk, but uh, it's supposed to be putting a sidewalk in coming in. And the lilac tree is, is right right there somewhere. I didn't go over and take a, a look at it, but they, they sent me a text that there's a lilac tree that, that's in the way. Okay. So you said uh, moving, moving it or? Yeah, just to relocate it. Okay. I think lilac trees, as far as I know, are pretty. Uh, Pretty good as far as uh, transplanting. Oh yeah, relocate. They're pretty That'd hardy, totally I think. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I did did want to bring you up to a little bit on the the FEMA stuff. Um, it looks like uh, you know the crew is pretty well along as far as the uh, getting the roads ready for winter. Um, mostly, what's left to be done is a resurfacing part. Um, uh, some things that are going to be carried forward in the next year is going to be the you know the large culverts. Uh, we got two on Wardbrook and and uh, one up by Sean's that are going to require us to uh, get an engineer involved and and get a get to you know get a design. Um, and I talked to FEMA regarding that and and they have you know directed me to get that RFP out. So I'll be I'll be doing that this week. Uh, and the same with the Lover's Lane uh, slide over there. Uh, we'll have to get an engineer to to help us out as far as the final uh, mitigation on that. Uh, but we will be putting up some temporary guardrail. The Lafayette will be doing that um, uh, sometime. It won't be till uh, for another month, unfortunately, but it'll be done before the snow flies. So pretty much you'll have a, a one lane road uh, on Lover's Lane for the winter uh, that will be accessible for plowing at least with the Dodge Ram, but probably not the, you know, the big trucks. But um, 
and you know, Martin feels okay with that. I think that's that's about the best we can do at this point. Uh, the chances of it getting repaired, getting a design and repaired um, before the snow flies I, right now are pretty slim. But um, you know, that's just a few things we're working on. I, you know, I've been working, meeting with FEMA every couple of weeks. We got a meeting coming up next Friday. Um, and uh, you know, there's this October 24th deadline, but that's basically uh, the deadline is for identifying the work and not necessarily having all the work completed, priced out. It's not a, it's like, it's not a final, okay, everything has to be done by this point. We just need to make sure that they know everything that we have in mind that needs to be done. And I, I think we're pretty close to that point as far as identifying uh, our any flood damage. So, that um, great. and that's, yeah, that's, that's about it. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions. That's, I just want to make sure you understood that there is, uh, there is going to be some work going forward to, into next year, uh, FEMA work. Um, that next year, I don't even know if, you know, possibly even going on a little bit further than that, but hopefully if we get some engineers and uh, get these color designs and get them out for bid, I I think the FEMA funding is going to be, it's either 80 or 90%, I think, depending on where it falls as far as the mitigation, but it, it, it could be 90%, but I, I will get that identified for sure. Uh, I mean, these projects are probably uh, between two to $300,000 a piece. So you're looking at, you know, over a million dollars, you know, four projects would be uh, $1.2 million. Wow. So, uh, you know, we may have to we may have to spread them out. You know, I I don't know, but at least uh, we'll hopefully have a design. Yep. We have a, someone in the someone had a question here. Was that Dave or me, Angelo? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've had some people at the comments been asking me if you and I attended one meeting, and at that time they didn't have security site. This is for the wastewater? No, no, no. No, no, oh. no this is for uh, all of the stormwater work that was done. Oh, okay. Because of the flood. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Yep, yeah. nope, that's okay. Uh, Robin, do you have any questions at all? Uh, no, Ray gave us a pretty good update. That sounds great. Nice. Yeah, Ray, I think uh, it's nice to hear. It doesn't sound like we need to do uh, Anything other than the guardrails at Lover's Lane? At least for this winter. Right. At this point. Because I know at one I mean, point. There may be, uh, uh, you know, there may be some surfacing, surface work, uh, you know, putting down some uh, plant mix. Uh, but that, I think, is going to be it. All right. So, Ray, is, is the... Uh... On Lover's Lane, so the guardrail is going to move it in, move it in the road, so it makes it one way. You know, it makes that's it correct. Better. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. But, you know, basically, yeah. we're yeah. trying to get as much road as we can. Right. But uh, you know, the other option was to put some jersey barriers, but we're very concerned about the weight of the barriers on that. Yeah. Bike. Yeah. And, you know, I think this is the best way to go. And you know, and the final project, the final project will be new guardrail. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we're, you know, we'll be able to use whatever we. Uh, I think reset, pull them out, reset them again. Like the project is done. That's great, Ray. Thank you uh, for the updates. Continue to you know to uh, let us know what's going on, um, and it, the project here. Uh, it does look good. I think they're doing a good job. It'll be uh, nice to see them finish up the fairly soon. Yep. Okay. All right, you guys. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you later. All right. Back to, well, I, I hope you hear this. <laughs> well, Ray's on there. I just wanted to mention to the board that uh, he's done such a tremendous job out here, uh, including all the meetings that we have. Um, he runs the meetings really well. And... Um, no, I mean, it's just, he's just been doing a real good job. Keeps everybody 
and it keeps everybody uh, in check and everything to it. Well, that's why we hired the guy. We knew he was good. So, uh, again, thanks, Ray. And that's, um, what's the name of this business? A1 Consultant? Um. On Point <laughs> Consultant. A1 On Point, something like that, right? Ray Washburn. <laughs> well, thank you, Ray. It's, uh, we appreciate you. All right, bye bye. All right. Um, so, Dave, looks like we're uh, moving ahead a little quicker than we uh, had timed on the agenda here, so it gives us a little bit more time. Uh, we've also been joined uh, by Christian Mayer from CDRPC. Um, so I think he would so awesome. you speak to them on the zoning issue? Yeah. Yep, I invited him for tonight. Good. So, and uh, we have Dave Stapleton, um, our zoning uh, administrator. Not our zoning administrator. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, anyways. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. No, no, never. <laughs> Planning Commission Chair. So, uh, and Dave, we're going to talk about uh, the zoning discussion and that's what Christian's here for. Um, we had uh, contacted CDRPC about perhaps uh, what they could offer us if they can at all. Um, so maybe why don't we start there. Uh, Christian, one of the, uh, obviously Karen just recently uh, got done. Uh, we are in the process of looking to uh, advertise and uh, hire a new zoning administrator. Um, I know when you were here last, I, I mentioned that uh, we possibly might need or would want to uh, see if there was someone within your office um, that we could uh, use. Um, so, you're on. Hi, thank you. Um, so, first of all, some things have changed in our office since since I was visiting you, which is namely uh, we will be losing Claire Rock as our as our senior planner and land use and uh, and community development. She really is uh, the only person we have on staff with that kind of experience who could slip into this role. Uh, so that's a, that's a, certainly a big loss to, to the organization, and, um, and obviously takes that option off the table. You know, more broadly, if the the idea of a, a shared staff member appeals to the town of Moortown, I think there's an opportunity for more discussion there. Um, in that in, in that situation, we would hire someone as something like a shared shared zoning administrator, something to that extent, and then the towns who would like to participate in that program would then appoint that individual as their zoning administrator. Um, we don't have someone like uh, that on staff currently. And I think if we probably located even just one other town that was in a similar situation to Moortown, we could probably uh, figure out a way to move forward for that. The benefit in, 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 in setting up a shared staff member like that is one, we could probably figure out a way to give them full time, if not between a minimum of two towns that are interested in the position, CVRPC could pick up the rest of their their calendar to to fill out their their schedule. Um, but uh, I mean, the advantage is the flexibility that it would offer the town. We we can get into the details on how that might work, but um, it, I think there's an opportunity there still to to support more town in their this process. So my understanding, I think Duxbury is looking for a zoning administrator. That was my understanding as well. Have you heard from Duxbury, Chris? Duxbury hasn't given me a call yet. Maybe I need to give them a call and uh, see if there's if this is something there might be interest in. Yeah, if that's something you want to reach out to, um, we would certainly. I think that's something we would be interested in, don't you think, Dave? Yeah, I really like this idea. Uh, Partly because of continuity, but uh, it seems like getting somebody who's doing this full time, even if it's not full time for us, would really be a uh, uh, positive. Yeah, I think it's someone we could keep on, uh, you know, relying on for a number of years. Yeah. Because if they have a full time job with the uh, with benefits, um, you know, it might be something that it's more desirable for for folks. Um, so yeah, Chris, if you want to reach out to Duxbury. Um, and let them know that we would be interested in that. I think um, that we would 
you know, if there is some interest there, then we could move forward on exploring, listen, hearing from you, uh, you know, and your thoughts on how that might work out. Sure, certainly. I can try to track down maybe some of the agreements uh, uh, the other regional planning commissions have used in setting up these kind of structures and kind of start with something and then we can figure out how to make it fit our needs. That sounds great. Um, Dave, are you agreeable to that? Yeah, sure. Board? Great. All right, so um, yeah, we look you know, forward to hearing from you, Chris, as soon as, uh, you know, you know, your schedule allows and you're able to contact uh, Duxbury, uh, then we can set up a Zoom meeting uh, with the board and you and, and, and that board if they, if they want, probably be good at some point as well, uh, and then move forward. And to make sure I understand, you currently do not have a zoning administrator on, on, on staff. She, she's recently That's correct. Resigned. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, and I think we, we we have had a little interest. Uh, someone who knew her did uh, mention she might be interested. So we will, you know, continue to pursue that. But uh, for long term, I think um, if we could get a position, a full time position between the two towns, that would be, you know, the ultimate goal. I think. Yeah, and actually, I spoke with Karen Salvador, who recently left, uh, and mentioned the. Well, I think she brought up the idea of combining it with Duxbury, and, and then I had suggested maybe working it through CVRPC so that there'd be one employer, and um, and she thought that would really make it more appealing to potential candidates, and, um, including her, her person she knows. Good. So, yeah. All right, so it sounds like we've got um, some of a plan ahead, ahead of us, um, and we'll just, in the meantime, uh, Dave and I will triage these things. Um, yeah. Should we forward, uh, I mean, the, the email we got of the woman who was interested, I mean, I guess, yes. uh, I think Karen's friend. Yes, I think it was forwarded to Dave, I think. I know, but should we? Oh, really? Oh, yeah, I didn't see that one. Huh. We'll make, if it hasn't, I'll yeah. have Should we also share it with, um, it's Chris that we're talking about? Christian, yeah. Christian. Christian. Yeah, we can go ahead and let him know. I mean, because we'll then maybe with, there would be something with the two towns, exactly. this woman, or you know, this yep. person who's interested. Oh, yeah, we will. That's good. Yeah, I do. Very good. Um, anything else that we should think about, Christian, with that? Uh, I think thinking about your budget a little bit and having some numbers in mind, um, probably a good place to start. Okay. But you probably, yeah, I mean, coming out of having an idea, you probably have a good idea of what your hour will bring to. Yeah, I, that's what we, when we hired Karen, we had done a, an analysis to, I mean, we, we started probably $10 an hour less than what we ended up with, but uh, to find someone competent and, and able to do the job, I think we were between 30 and 35. Okay, because the way it would work is they, you know, as, a, as an employee of the CVRPC, they'd have, you know, they'd have their salary, the fringe um, and benefits that we offer. And then I, we we'd set up a, a unique system for this employee where they wouldn't have our overhead, which is a, we have a relatively high overhead rate currently, and that we'd be able to kind of get that out of the equation. But I think somewhere in the 35 range seems, seems manageable. Yeah, good. All right, that's awesome. Tom, how, how many hours were we paying care for? We were around 11, I believe. Um, but based on her feedback, she didn't think that was really enough mm -hmm. to get the job done. Mm -hmm. And so we might, as we're coming into budget season, um, you know, play around with that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I thought I should bring up something else, another idea which I was planning to present the select board sometime in the future. But uh, this seems a propitious time, and that is uh, potentially expanding the zoning administrator's responsibilities so that she would take on tasks that sometimes are given to like a development planner for the town or a town planner. And um, this idea 
came to me and we talked about the planning commission out of our work on the ordinances last year. You know, we've made a lot of changes that that uh, make it possible for you know, pretty much anybody with a single family dwelling to make it into a duplex or or with just a regular zoning permit or, or expanded ADUs and that sort of thing. And and to the extent that there's you know, I don't think people in the town, if they weren't paying attention, would know that, right? Right. And to the extent they want to inform people, it would be nice to have somebody who was kind of in charge of doing that. Also, if there's a developer from somewhere interested or there's an opportunity available from the state that we should be paying attention to, this person could do it. And I'll give you an example of that. As a, you may have heard of this, but there's something called the Vermont Housing VHIP. Housing Incentive Program, I guess, uh, which the state legislature just passed in that Home Act, and, and they are handing out grants to homeowners up to fifty thousand dollars to refurbish, build, or upgrade a, an ADU, provided that the the ADU is used for somebody in a low income population, refugees, yeah. people coming out of homelessness, and you know. Um, and I, you know, that's something that we, I, I'm actually thinking we'll send something out on for the porch forum as part of the planning commission now, but it's something that, the, that this person would be on top of. And, you know, Karen was a great ZA, and she was on top of a lot of things that, that the town needs to be paying attention to. So I mean, it's, it's kind of a natural extension of what she was doing. So what we should do, or I'd ask maybe you and um, you, uh, the rest of Planning Commission is maybe um, tune up the job description. Yeah. Okay. Um, and if you were to add that, because um, if we're trying to get, you know, a 50 50 job and we want to be, you know, in the, the 20 hour range, anyways, uh, and I think there's plenty of zoning to do, but if we were uh, doing a little other things as well that would uh, benefit the town. Yeah, I, it seems like it wouldn't be hard to get up to $20, 20 hours a week if we had the budget for it. So, yeah. 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 I think we can uh, certainly work with that. Uh, Chris, that would work still with your mission as well? Yeah, I would, I would think so, unless there's another town that's calling for significantly more than 20 hours. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I, I wouldn't suspect if Duxbury is interested that they would want more than half time. Yeah, good, all right. So uh, if you guys wanna go ahead and, okay. and work on that uh, job description, and then we can get that out to, to Christian, but let's all communicate as, you know, as often as we need to, to try to move forward as quickly as possible for you if we can. Sounds good. Very good. Thank you, Christian, for joining us tonight. I appreciate you taking the time. No problem, thanks for having me. Yep, all right. Do we need to address the municipal planning grant? Yeah, why don't we go ahead and do that as well? So uh, uh, we want the town to apply for a municipal planning grant. Our uh, current town plan expires in January, and we actually had started working on revising it uh, a few months ago, but we should have applied for this grant a year ago. And uh, we really need to get the grant so we can get the Revised plan in progress. There's a lot, still a lot to do, and um, if 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 be, because our town plan is expiring, we will lose our ability to bid on grants for other purposes unless we are in the process officially of updating the plan. So so the grant would serve that purpose as well. Um, I've been talking to uh, CBRPC. They'll, they'll actually write the proposal for us and. Uh, they, and it was Claire Rock who was the main person I was talking to. Uh, she, they hired somebody new that she's training. She was there too, and was Eli something. Anyway, oh, yeah, they talked about Eli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but anyway, uh, we, uh, you know, Claire thinks we need about twenty thousand dollars, and that would be mostly spent on a consultant who would do a lot of work, and uh, um, they don't. She did not think that. CBRPC would have be able to provide that service that we'd have to get somebody independently of CBRPC. But um, there is a matching requirement of 10%, and so that for $20,000, it would be $2,000. And uh, um, 
it could be spread out over two years, so it would be a thousand a year for two years. So in order to get this, apply for this grant, you know, we have to have a signed form, which Tom has, and uh, it needs to be completed and, and approved by the select board that we can submit along with the grant itself. All right, so I will, or we will, um, John will make a motion here in a moment. Um, and then after that, we will sign off. And then, do you need this back, Dave, or, have, or is this uh, something that Sasha needs to work on? Yeah, I, I would say Sasha probably, if it, and she could submit it formally to, and we would probably transmit it to um, Claire and Eli for okay. us, and they would just include it with the grant. So, if, with the grants, so we'll look at Sasha and, and Cheryl, and with Cheryl and deals with the grants. Okay. So we'll do that. All right, so you're, you're signed off. Um, yeah. Um, did you want to look at that or? Yeah, there are instructions that I gave you with it which tell you about this. Like, there needs to be somebody, I imagine Cheryl Lynn, that was going to be in there as the administrator for yeah. the town. Yeah. Well, I'll make the motion then that, uh, that we go ahead and um, sign this resolution. Uh, to apply for municipal planning grant. Second. Second. Any uh, further discussion? All good, everyone? All in favor, vote aye. 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 All right, so I'll we'll sign that and uh, pass it along once it's done. Okay, I still owe some of your budget for next year. Should I put all of this into it or half of it into it? Or? Um, somebody else take care of it. Yeah, why don't you actually, Sherilyn will take care of that part of it. Okay. Yep. We'll figure that one out. Uh, but Dave, thanks. We'll be in touch um, with the zoning. But anything that's coming in now, so you're getting emailed. Oh, yeah. yeah. I get a lot of them. I haven't done anything with them, but there are some that need, can, can be easy to attend to, I think, but I'm not always sure what to do. Um, so what, is that something you want to take a look at, or should we have them sent to the office, have Sasha? triage them. Um, I, I think that might be better. I'm not that organized. Okay. So I can, um, and then we have different board members who, um, depending on what it is, because some of it's just statute tells us we yeah. need to within 15 days at least recognize yeah. it or, or tell them they don't have a, a complete yeah. permit or a complete application. Um, so if you send that stuff on to Sasha um, and then we'll Figure that out between me, you, and, and Robin. We'll uh, figure out what to do on these inquiries. And I, I don't, I'm probably capable of addressing some of these emails and happy to do that if I need to, but I don't want to be the organizer. All right. Well, we'll have um, Sasha be the organizer, and there may be some things that may, we may pass off to you uh, if that's more appropriate. Thank you, Dave. and. Um, before Dave goes, can we just, you know, not that we might pick a date right now, but to keep on our radar that we wanted the planning PC and the SB to meet to talk about legal trails. Legal trails and roads. I mean, that's... You know, just to have a brainstorming session to get, to get the topic on the... Yeah, that's, I think that would be good. Um, so let me know. say that I do think it fits in with our work on the town plan. Uh, we are, just to give you a little background, we, are, we have already started doing some mapping activity and the state is, has been developing a map of the whole state that differentiates between areas that uh, would be desirable, you know, high, high environmental value, areas where we shouldn't build because of, you know, flooding or, or uh, uh, wetlands, and areas that would be good to develop, all well, areas that are good for agriculture. Right. So they're doing this whole thing. They're about to hand it off to the Regional, Center for the regional Planning and Commissions. And then the Regional Planning Commission is supposed to review their region, possibly provide them feedback, make changes, but they're also supposed to pass it off to the towns. And so we're going to get this thing, right? So we, what we want to do with the town plan is see how those maps overlay our current zoning districts, property boundaries, and all that, and then develop in the plan recommendation ideas for preserving areas that we think ought 
value preserved or developing areas that we've contributed all that kind of stuff. And I think the legal trail and what we do with the legal trails is very relevant to that. Yeah. So, yeah, we need to keep that discussion going. I know Donnie's brought it up a couple times. We all agree. Um, and it's, you know, a couple times a year or at least that we have people coming in with yeah. questions about it. I so. also tell you the other members of my planning commission don't want anything to do with people travel. So, getting them in here and <laughs> talk is a good idea. <laughs> well, the thing is, we're going to come into the holidays soon. So, we're, uh, and then the next thing you know, it's since. January, February, and it's budgets and getting ready for the town meeting. So I don't know, you know. Is there you know, when there's a time we can all say we'll, we'll you know have a half half hour brainstorming at one of our select board meetings? I guess would be the well, maybe our second know. select board meeting in November. There you go. That's. Uh, Is that doable for your probably team? Probably, I, I will. That's the sixteenth. I can let them know on the twentieth. 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 So that would be uh, November twentieth. Okay. Pre-holiday. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Something to digest. So All, right. All right. So let's try to aim for that. Yeah. If you can, uh, we'll. Uh, and we'll bring right. food in for the the members, so everyone that might get people to come. Right. <laughs> food exactly. Yeah. All right, thank you, David. Right. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. All right, see you uh, okay, so I'll, we'll sign this. There may be a couple of us that need to sign this up, but if you want a meeting, once you take a look at it, there's me and, and there might be two select board members if you just want to look at that, but make sure. All right, we are moving right ahead. Um, it's 6.36 and... More fest? Committee coming in? Uh, they are not coming oh, in. Oh. They decided um, they needed to postpone uh, for whatever reason. I really didn't hear. I didn't get a text with them, um, so that was that was all right. Um, so our next discussion we have, um, although the McMullins are not here yet, so why don't we wait for them because we were on the uh, docket for seven, so they were probably doing that. So why don't we skip ahead to reports and communications? Sasha, I'll start with you. Um, we need, after the last meeting in German, we talked to Don. We need to have a motion to officially accept Gil Gilson serving. Oh, Gilson serving, yeah. That was one thing that we need to clarify. Oh, what, it wasn't, still wasn't there was no what? Technical motion made for it. In the last meeting, I thought that's what John corrected when we were. Not for Gilson. Yeah. Uh sure to make sure it was Robin made the motion to use twenty five hundred of the four thousand Weber grant to go towards the survey for the town hall and the ten fourteen event. So I second it all in favor. I guess she needed the name, so I guess maybe amending that. Possibly. Oh, towards the... To oh. say Gilson. Oh, towards the Gilson survey. Add that in that sentence right there. <laughs> Go ahead. Just make a new motion to the... Um... Because when the RFPs are open and then a decision is made for that okay. company. All right. Uh, well, now, since it was Robin, but we can say John... I would like to make a motion to use 2,500 of the 4,000 Merper grant to go towards the uh, Gilson survey for the town hall and the town and the 1014 event. If we can get a second on this. I'll, I'll second that. Mm -hmm. seconds. Any discussion on this? All in favor of Rhode Aye. 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 All right. Um, Thanks, Tom. Yeah. I forwarded an email from, I'm going to butcher her last name, Sybil Schlesinger. That's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> uh, she would like to 
be appointed to be the alternate delegate for CD Fiber. Her son, Sam Rosenberg, is actually resigning, and she would like to be appointed to that position. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll do that. We'll do that at the end so we don't have to kick people out because we need to go to executive session for that. And then I had a question on our holidays. A couple of the area towns are closed for Indigenous Day, and that's not on our list. And I was wondering if we could add it overnight. Indigenous Day. Well, we got yeah. Previously closed. Yes. Yeah. I think it's still, yeah. Oh, that's not a holiday in the town. Is that a state holiday? I I don't think so because I believe. Well, I know you know with us, with us I believe we didn't we trade and did battle with Bennington and said. Oh, is that what it was for Columbus Day? So I think so. Because the the state did battle battle with Bennington, but not Columbus. But, I mean, that's, that's what I vaguely remember. Okay. Let's look into that if there's... What was that? Yeah, about? I mean, well, that's just next Monday, so... Oh, I know. I mean, so we wouldn't... <laughs> wouldn't for this year anyway. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean... I don't know. Does it say the state doesn't... The state doesn't... The state isn't... It's not a federal holiday. It's not a federal holiday. And the state passed a bill abolishing Columbus Day in favor of Indigenous People's Day. But it doesn't say it's a state holiday. Mm -hmm. Let's see. And I think schools are closed because my grandsons are off Monday. I don't know what's going on. Some states celebrate, but you know, I don't know if we want. Why don't we do some research for that and we can, um, I mean, that would be a fairly big pol I mean, a policy change, obviously. So that would be something we would, when we do the uh, policy change, what do we call it, John? Um, mm -hmm. We usually do it right after March meeting. Uh, right, right. Um, if we want to. Change the uh, holidays and things like that. We'll, we'll do it then. We'll do some research. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But in the meantime, we'll do some research. To see yeah. See if if if, I mean, if the state if if it's a state holiday, then it's not, it's clear. Um, but I don't. As John mentioned, he he thought they didn't, and they chose yeah. better to battle. It would be interesting though if schools are closed though. They are closed. Yeah. Well, this one is closed. Yeah. Huh. They are. Well, I'll the state of the state. Oh, that's different. The more terms, the yeah, Howard Union yeah. district and so huh. What about Berlin? The, the school? No, no, no. You, you working one day? Absolutely not. Oh, okay. We so have it off. Okay. Well, that's right. <laughs> we don't get, but we don't get Martin Luther King Day, uh, Juneteenth, Battle of Bennington Day. Right. So there's... But we have the day after Thanksgiving all the time, so it's, yeah. it's a toss up. But yeah, yeah, no, we do have this off because I know I think it's Columbus Day and President's Day that I have off and Sean has given. Or that's how it was last year. Yeah. Okay, so. But no, we have it on. Anything else, Sasha? Yes. Uh, what are your ambulance? Send me another oh. invoice. Did we ever... Yeah. So we had made a commitment to them. Um, was it? It's probably a year ago, and we were thinking yeah. about the funds. Let's go ahead and send them the money. Um, 
Did we discuss that in our last meeting? I thought we talked about it. A lot of very heavy ones. No, no. We're going to circle around that too. I think we have in our select board. Um, Does anyone have a, um, or saw her most recent uh, budget report? And I was thinking that the money that we had in the, uh, the select board's discretionary. Yeah, discretionary fund that it could come there. Because we have. Start there. I mean, let's write a check in. There's, we have a couple other funds in there. I think we'll, we'll have plenty of money to do it. Is that all right with everyone? Yep. We need to get it from somewhere. Right. Um, the free wheeling, that gentleman's come back in just to check. And so, free wheeling, we um, never made a, a, um, how much of a commitment we were going to give to those guys. I, I think we decided. We've, we've talked about it. Um, I did look into it. Um, Waitsfield gave me 10,000. Um, Warren gave me 1,000. Um, so, I don't know. What do you think? Um, we were going to use some of the opera funds, right? Um, possibly. We had talked about that, but. Um, I, I think we might have enough other money in the budget, but twenty five hundred um, or or less. What do you guys think that we could spend on that? Yeah. Well, I, 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 I mean, I, I would say a thousand because that, that's what we're doing. Yeah. I, I think two thousand would be appropriate. And I was going to say 2,500, so we're all on the board. I mean, they're really providing <laughs> great service, so now, you know. I'm fine with whatever. They do, I think they're providing a, a good service. I don't, um, you know, they, I, I don't think we, I don't know. All right, 2,500. 2,500, in the basis of, if in the future, if they want to get on the, uh, the town, get the signatures, petition, petition um, but we can do that for them. Yep. So I'll, I, I guess I'll, I'll make the motion then that we um, donate or, or give freewheeling uh, $2,500 for this year. And uh, going forward, uh, they would be treated like any other organization and submit a petition. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And they, the reason I appreciate you doing that, John, is uh, they actually had come with a petition last year. That's right. But they, and then yeah. there was confusion on our part whether the ARPA yeah. funds or not. So they've got, they did the work for it and would right. probably get uh, voted in. So Sasha, anything else from you? That's it for me, thank you. All right, so why don't we move on or move back uh, uh, or up to our seven o'clock discussion. We've got uh, uh, Bob and um, uh, Bev, thank you for coming. Well, so, yeah. and so we'll go back or, or start the discussion of the Commons, 20, uh, Commons Unit 25 discussion. Um, if you guys, the four of you, want y'all pull up around the table? You want to move to your right, if you don't mind? Thank you. Here, and 
Let's see. I didn't see you there before. Hi. <laughs> Sasha likes to stay out of the camera view. Yeah. Where do you want to see? Just pull right up to the table, uh, Mofia, and we can squeeze in. We're all friends. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you once more, just if everyone can introduce themselves to the, uh, to the camera, to our audience. Uh, we have Robin Campbell, our fifth member of the select board that's at home on um, Zoom tonight. So we'll, we'll just make sure we speak loud enough for him. Um, but My name is Peter Rinaldi. I'm on the board of directors of Cut the Commons. All right. Angelo Napolitano. Angelo Napolitano. All right. And you're uh, on the board as well? Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm the president. president. Give or take. The president. Sometimes we say that. And no. no. <laughs> Beverly McMullen. Bob oh, McMullen. Hey. How you doing, Bob? Right. So uh, I guess, Angelo, it was you that requested the meeting or? Uh, I'm going to wait until Beverly speaks, okay? It was a uh, we are the ones who requested the meeting. She, she requested the meeting, <laughs> and I came to to be in the defense of the condo association. The board has everything. The select board has everything. All right, Bev, so go ahead. Okay, thank you for having us here this evening. We appreciate your time very much. Um, we, I think Mr. Napolitano was here on September 5th um, asking Mr. Valentinetti to um, attend, to go with him to examine the crawl space under the building in which we own the condominium at the Commons condo. Um, and that inspection, which I believe you have a copy of Mr. Valentinetti's report, was carried out on September 20th. Okay. Um, prior to that, just to give you a little bit of background, was uh, this has been an ongoing issue since um, it was, uh, we were informed by our tenants that our hot water heater was rusty at the bottom. He had no evidence that it was leaking into the apartment, but he said he thought it looked like it was probably needed to be replaced. That was on April 6th. On April 7th, we called Kevin Bienz, our licensed plumber, and he replaced the water heater uh, on or about April 30th. Um, then we had, in May, uh, a prospective buyer look at the apartment, and they ordered a um, Home inspection report by Adam Cotton of Cottonwood Home Inspectors. Um, Mr. Cotton um, examined the crawl space as well as the interior of our unit, and um, he found several deficiencies underneath um, regarding the fact that our water heater apparently had been leaking, and perhaps also the bathroom fixtures. Okay. Um, so at that point. Um, we decided that obviously needed something needed to be done. Um, and we called a number of different people to get opinions and um, proceeded to, um, uh, according to Mr. Uh, uh, Cotton's report, he discovered uh, potential mold issues under the unit. So we talked to, um, and then at that point, um, the board of directors asked for a copy of the inspection report, which I provided to them. And um, they subsequently, according to the um, information report, had um, uh, Joe Gavarini, who did, was doing work for the association, uh, go under the unit and um, he took pictures and they had him, or I'm not sure if it was the board's decision or Mr. Gavarini's decision to um, remove the foam that was covering the um, four basement um, window wells and um, 
And apparently at some point someone, uh, Mr. Gabbari didn't do it, but someone had also a fan down there at one point to try to increase air circulation to prevent more mold from developing. Okay. And um, so Mr. Gabbari, uh, I'm going to read, I passed out comments there which you can keep. Uh, Mr. Gabbari did have a conversation with me, um, and during that conversation, he thought it would be a good idea to have a mold assessor come to take samples and determine what type of mold, if any, was there. Uh, so we contacted uh, Twin States Systems, which is a remediation company that does that type of work, and they recommended a mold assessor. Uh, his name is Wesley Carpenter, and we made an appointment. We notified the board of directors that we would like to have access to the crawl space for the purpose of having Mr. Carpenter examine it or take samples. All right, the board denied us the access to the crawl space for that purpose and uh, said that if Mr. Carpenter went there, he would be trespassing. So, and then we should cancel the appointment. We did not cancel the appointment because we wanted to speak to Mr. Carpenter, and he did come. He drove all the way from Heinsburg. We told him he, in advance he would not be allowed to go under the building. But he came, and we spent probably 20, 25 minutes uh, talking to him and getting some advice from him. Okay. What he would have done was he would have taken samples if he found mold or suspicion of mold and sent them to a lab. And that would be at our expense, it would be $300 in order to um, get a report as to just exactly what was there or not. All right. Um, and subsequently with that, because we knew that there were potential leaks under the building, um, we also called Kevin Viennes, who is our local licensed plumber, uh, to come and also um, correct whatever might be leaking there. He also was denied access to the crawl space by the board of directors, and we were told that only he could only come within the four walls of our apartment. So subsequently, we did not have Mr. Vienz come because we felt if a plumber couldn't go where the leaks were, how was he going to fix them? Okay. Um, and just to set the tone for this, right back in the beginning on July 21st, which was right after um, Mr. Cotton had examined the uh, property on July 17th, uh, I asked, I sent an email to Donna Stackhouse, who is a member of the board, uh, asking, uh, in view of the fact that the sale of our unit failed due to the consideration of the crawl space, condition of the crawl space, I would like to contact the owners of the other first floor units could you please send me the names and contact information for them? And I get a message back from Donna saying, the board has considered your request and has decided that it's not appropriate for you to address your situation with other owners. So I'll go ahead and uh, read the uh, information that I've given you so that you can keep it. There will be a copy for it. Of uh, the secretary as well, so you don't have to take notes over there. It is so, Sasha's. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're way over there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you wouldn't have to take notes on this, okay? Um, on September 20th, the Wartown Health Officer Richard Valentinetti made an inspection of the call space under Wartown Commons Building 84, units 23 to 30. It reports that rot and white mold were found in the crawl space under Unit 25. As suggested by Joe Gabbari, we had attempted on August 29th to have a mold assessor, Wesley Carpenter, evaluate the crawl space situation, but were told by the HOA to cancel the appointment that he would be trespassing when he went there. We had offered to pay the cost, $300 or so, of evaluating samples and an additional amount to conduct remedial work as required. We contacted both Twin State Systems and another company, Northern Basement Systems, and received the same verbal opinion from both, that the crawl space needs to be closed up and a dehumidifier and possibly an air exchanger installed. Brad Cook, whose son Sean owns Unit 27, is an energy efficiency expert, and he expressed the same opinion 
that opening up the crawl space and allowing more moist humid air in was not the best way to correct the situation. And I'll interject here that I did have several conversations with uh, Mr. Gattery, including one this evening, and of course he reiterate, reiterated um, his opinion that opening up the windows to allow fresh air in was the best solution. And in fact, he was opening up windows underneath another building this week, I believe. Um, so we have had um, a couple of opposing opinions on that. We also requested the licensed plumber, Kevin Bienz, to repair whatever was leaking in Unit 25, and I explained that. I wouldn't have to go to read that. And also, the next sentence. Um, as noted above, we have been impeded from correcting the crawl space problem and are being held hostage in being able to move forward in marketing our unit. It is now two months since a home inspection report by Adam Cotton identified a problem and the delay in allowing us to proceed in correcting it has probably only made the situation worse. We are here to ask that Mr. Valentinetti request that the HOA Board of Directors allow us to have access to the crawl space so that tests and examinations conducted by qualified operators at our expense can be made in order to determine exactly what the corrective measures need to be taken and proceed with such corrective actions. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's just a good comment. All right. I'm terribly sorry once again um, that this uh, select board has to hear this. Um, let me let me start from the very beginning of all of this. This woman was on board. She knows how a board operates. I cannot make a decision. Donna Stockhouse cannot make a decision. Peter cannot make a decision without the entire board's approval. The same way John can't make a decision or Kelly can't make a decision without the entire board's approval. Now, yes, they did request, and we said we would give it some thought. The request was this day, and we got it this day, without even the board coming back and saying yes or no, or let us think about it, okay? Now, Beverly knows how that board operates, because she was on the board. Now, we're, we're the board takes umbrage is she started going to different board members, single emails. I have them all here. I don't want to bother you with it. Rather than get the entire board's approval, trying to go to this one, to this one. So let me address also the air exchanger. Let me address the um, dehumidifier. I talked to the commissioner of fire in, on a very Mount Hillier road. And I also talked to Hugh, who takes care of this area, Bob Stanoble, to run wire. This is a 200-foot crawl space. So what they would want to do is plug in two 100-foot wires. That's a fire hazard, OK? Plus, it has to be monitored daily. Who is going to do that, even if the board gave the OK? Now, at the last HOA meeting that we had, Bev and Bob were able to discuss this with the people there. Oh, before I forget, this quote, Cotton, this quote, Inspector, 
we turned him into the state licensing department because he started to tell people in the quads, you need to evacuate because they're deadly black mold. This is what, and this isn't even her report, it's Alvarez's report. Okay, how would you like an inspector all sweat, because I was there, he came out of the hole, banging on your door, now you gotta leave. Tom, black deadly mold. I have a I have a brochure from the state of Vermont. There is no such thing as black deadly mold. I'll leave it with you if you want. The only thing that I have ever said to the McMullins is. What are you going to do about your rot? It needs to be taken care of. What are you going to do? However, she's fixated on the crawl space. Richard and I went into crawl space, bone dry, until we get under unit 25 which is Bed and Bob Jr. Bone dry. The previous property manager, Mike Lorraine, blew in insulation on every window well in the complex. And it needs ventilation. So Joe was working on it the other day, putting screens up and stuff like that. And I want, to, I want to get in, in on the minutes here. Joe Gavary speaks for Joe Gavary. He does not speak for the comments. Okay? So, in order to get anything accomplished on the comments, anybody, I don't care who it is, including myself, because I had a bathroom window put in, I went to the board and I, I wrote it out. And they okayed it. Now, I don't do abuse of power. I came here several years ago to ask you guys to help out with the help. And a guy is living large now. As a matter of fact, this man right here bought Dale's unit. Living large. Got into it, got it, excuse me, it's my turn. She wrote him letters, which he never opened. He handed them to me, he said, would you please tell her to stop right here, that? So, you know, it doesn't, I don't mean to sound like a wise ass, okay, what I'm gonna say. The five of you have no authority up there. This unit is nothing like they are elders. Nothing. It, as a matter of fact, I even put in writing to her and Bob, sell it as is. At least you'd be making some money. Sell it as is. She got offended. She wrote it as Bob being offended. So, you know, I think the thing is, is that she wants to go with, it's, you got Richards. You got it, you got the report. If he had saw anything, he would have put it there. Am I not correct? Can I add? Go ahead. All right, thank you. So the inspection revealed with pictures as well as text commentary that the inspector saw not only pooling of water from appliances coming to the floor, but the rot and mold only under that unit, nowhere else. 
So there's several places where the water is coming down. It has obviously wrecked the subfloor. It's been going on for years with the amount of damage there's there. So the HOA is gonna fashion a letter and send it to them and ask them to make the necessary repairs and to submit a plan to us as to what their repairs will be. Because we believe they're gonna to have to tear up their subfloor, the plywood and the flooring above it, and get in underneath the subfloor and look at the leaks that are caused by her, their appliances and repair those leaks. They may need new fixtures, but they're gonna need a new subfloor. And so we're gonna send them that letter with the idea of hopefully they will make the repairs necessary that are, ne uh, that are required. But it's not a question of just mold. It's a question of years of destruction from water seeping from many appliances. When you toilets, top, dishwasher, sinks, and they've all done a tremendous damage. There is no other damage in any other unit in that building, just that, that unit. So they probably weren't aware until the leak came up of the, uh, of the recent hot water heater of the damage that had been done. But now that we recognize there's so much damage at some of the unit, they're gonna have to repair it. So we're gonna send them a kind letter asking them to submit a plan to the HOA to fix this mess. See, let me say this, in that plot, okay, that building plot, there's a condo here, a condo here, a condo here, and a McMullen's condo. Yep. The condo above them, the guy's living with his fiance and whatnot. He turned off all the water, he drained the hot water heater, okay, flipped all the switches. This condo, this condo, is above the storage unit, okay? Nowhere near, okay? So the only thing that is leaking right there is Beverly and Bob's um, pipes, right. okay? Now, if, I never told her she couldn't have Kevin Vienz or whatever his first name is go into the unit. You don't need to go down I can, and I don't know what I'm doing, tell if I have water pipe that's leaking. It's leaking, it'll be right on the surface. Now, if, if I was told this at the last HOA meeting, he can bear witness, well, it came from the guy upstairs. Well, if it came from the guy upstairs, why isn't your ceilings caving in? Say so came from the guy upstairs. I never said that. So let me let me. We've heard some. We've heard from both sides here, and uh, I, I want to find out what I'm missing here. Okay, because I'm a little confused. It seems like we've got the McMullins on this side with the unit, and they are. Uh, they told us tonight that their unit. A hot water tank and possibly other fixtures are leaking. Is that what you said? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There, there was a hot water tank and possibly your fixtures are leaking. It's in Cotton's report that it's right. leaking. Yeah. So you've got, yes. and you're taking responsibility for yes. that. Yes, we've offered to pay for it and everything. And, and, on, the, and on the other hand, you guys are going to send a letter asking them to fix what they have told us tonight that they're trying to fix. Exactly. Well, you see, the exactly. thing is, so, um, I have been asking for the intent, Tom. Give me something in writing. Well, we need to fix the crossing. Give me something in writing, what you're going to do about the rock. So, we had to contact the condo's attorney. Right, no, I understand, okay. Okay, so this is what and, and she should have it and, and every board member should have it because I sent it out to Sasha this morning. Yes, we received it. And, yes. and so, 
and Peter said the, the you know you possibly need to do the subflooring and, and the flooring. So wouldn't it be if you could go under rather than go down through the unit to, to get there? Wouldn't it be easier to allow access to the crawl space for them to? According to Joe Gavory, and he has told Beverly three times, you got to go from the top down. In this situation, in every situation, you don't go from the bottom up. You go from the top down. You start tearing out the floor to see how bad the rock is, okay? And then once you start doing that, everything else falls into place. But he told, he told the McMullins this three times, okay? And, and the thing is, is that you don't fix that from the bottom up. You fix it from the top down. But don't you, isn't it, the, the goal here is to get this unit fixed, right? We, we don't want, rotted floors, we don't want appliances or anything. And you came in guys looking for diplomacy before you were here earlier. They, they said they were coming in and looking for diplomacy. So what can we decide here tonight to get allowed? And I know you can't make decisions on your own. You've got to bring this to the board. But let's put a param some parameters here. If the McMullins sent you, uh, the, the, the board, a plan, we plan on having, uh, I, was, I can't remember her names, but Kevin as a plumber, um, Bob as, as a carpenter. Uh, the intent is to replace all flooring needed, all appliances and, and drippy uh, faucets. That's all we I have ever be approved. And access may be needed through the, the crawl space right. to assess or complete a project. Sure. Is that something that you guys want to throw together? Yeah. And it sounds like they would get it approved because we're all, I think it's, it's a win-win situation for everyone. If you guys get the big Mullins and, and they've said publicly right. here on record, they're footing the bill. They're not looking to push it anywhere else. They're looking to fix the unit so they can sell the unit, it sounds like. Yeah. And you want a unit that <laughs> fixed. that's fixed, yeah. that brings everyone's value up because right. You don't want junk there. Besides, you want something good, and they'll do something I think reasonably good or better than what's there, and it's a win-win. Well, you know the thing is, is that ego will push people to do stuff. Okay, stubbornness will push people to do stuff. Righteousness will push people to do stuff. We have this young man over there from Orca, okay? When people see this, they're gonna go, oh, there's a two bedroom condo up there for 90, 198,000, I'm not gonna buy it, it's full of rock. And you got the people from the board that are storming. See, a lot of stuff doesn't get thought through town very well. You know, she has been on the board. She knows how the board works. Yeah. Okay, so if she puts everything in writing according to the document she must have got sometime today, okay, that's all. That's all I have ever asked. What is the intent? Can I speak, please? Yes, go ahead. All right, we have 15 minutes. We are the ones who applied to the select board to come here and talk, and Mr. Napolitano is taking way more time than we should have, because this is our time to speak, right? And I want to say, all right, Mr. Gavary never said to us that this was the way to do it. He said that this so was Mr. Gavary, right. excuse me, Mr. Napolitano just stated that Mr. Gavary said to us three times yeah. that the way to correct this was to go from the top down. Mr. Gavary, and you may call him and ask him, never said that to us. And some of the other all right, things. There's, there's, uh, again, we don't need to get in. There's a lot of nitpicky things on, uh, on either side, uh, just, and we need to, to to move forward. I mean, there's and we all, you know, for reasons that we don't understand. Sometimes we we say things or do things, and, and maybe we shouldn't. And we regret them afterwards, or maybe we don't. But um, 
we can, and that's why I think we, we got this solved. All you need to do is, is forward this paper um, assessment that you got and the things you're going to do to the board. Peter here is written publicly said, that's what they want. I mean, they want to get a unit done. You want to get a unit done. There's nothing stopping us, I don't think, aside from egos. And we got to drop those at the door and um, get, it get it fixed. And then uh, I move agree. forward. Okay. May I just speak in conclusion? Yes, you may. Thank you. In conclusion, I wish to say that this is not a win or lose situation. There needs to be cooperation and a good outcome. We were not born in Vermont, but we have lived here for 45 years, and we have seen how people do business here. We have never had to call a lawyer to represent us, and we do not desire to do it now. And I don't think there's any need, and I think um, we were able to sit around and, you know, cooperation. And again, you guys, it, it is bad. It's, it's not a win or lose. It is a win-win situation. You're going to be able to get the contractors in to do what you guys need to do. Peter and the other people there are going to have a building that's not right. wet in the basement at this point or, or whatever's going on in there. You're taking responsibility for your unit and what's happening. And uh, it sounds like we can move forward that's and work together. All, that's all I have ever asked. I put it in right in town. That's all I ever, I don't want to hear. We don't, even, we don't even have to go there anymore. We've got it, yeah. we got it decided. And yeah. you guys, the, the Mullins are going to present by what? By the end of the week? Yeah. Um, today's Monday. By the end of the week, send the HO. HOA. HOA, a letter requesting just exactly what we've said here, and Peter sounds like he's going to be able to get it okay. approved. Can we be assured that we'll have free access to, to that basement? Why are you asking him? You should ask the board. In, in your letter, Bob, right. to the board, Say asking yes. we need free access for our contractors for the period that they're they're working there. And I don't think it's it, what it is. Plumber, right? Plumber, not mold inspector, no. general plumber, yeah, uh, contract. contractor, hey. professional, licensed people. Well, we've and never sure. received that cooperation in the past, and we have no real um, guarantee that we can. Well, I think you'll get it. I think you'll get it. I hope so. I, 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 I think I've, 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 we've dealt with Angelo before. We have a good relationship. Peter's new to the board here. But uh, until they, you know, step on their toes, we're going to say, you know what, they're going to do the right thing and do what we've, you know, what we've heard tonight. And, and if not, please come back. Uh, again, we don't have a lot of jurisdiction up there as far as what we can do. But... We will do what we can to help you, which we have done tonight. I hope it helped you, I hope, tonight. Thank you. Uh, so everyone can go out of here feeling like they, they each got a little peace, if you will. Um, and uh, we'll progress will be All right. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank you. We appreciate Forward it. progress. Thanks, Angela. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Always nice. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank you as well. So I'm making meatballs for this. Um, what is this thing? Is it Saturday the 10th? No, the 14th. 14th. You got something to keep them warm? <laughs> yeah, all right. I, I love meatballs. I was. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? Is that between you and Don and John. <laughs> Well, believe me, we can put it away. Oh, I lost the rate. Right. I don't think yeah. I noticed. I don't say anything, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you, Don. All right. All right, so we're just waiting on Don. Yeah, so if you got something to keep them warm, that would I think dawned on me because they'll be in the sauce. Like a crock pot? Huh? Like a crock pot? No, tomato sauce. <laughs> Okay. All right. So let's, uh, Don, you all set? Yeah. Oh, am I all set for No, I just split you back. <laughs> I'm here. Yeah. Robin, how are you doing back there? Don't hang it in here. 
<laughs> All right. Okay. So let's uh, go ahead. Sasha, you were finished with your yep, reports, okay. communications. Uh, Ms. Callie, you got anything for us? Are you working on, I'm going to ask questions while I'm moving on here. Um, uh, the ATV thing, the mm -hmm. roads? Okay, yep. I just want to make sure that you're not forgetting that. Nope, we're still working on that. Yep. Very good. Um, Robin, what do you got? Anything for us? I got nothing. Just, uh, you know, an offer to help out on any of that zoning, uh, as I stated last meeting. Uh, and as far as communication and stuff like that, uh, it sounds like Sasha is going to be gathering. Gathering, those gathering it and then, right. She'll be gathering it and then pushing it out. Um, okay. Either you, Dave, or myself to okay. uh, triage and do. Okay. Works for me. Thank you for um, volunteering for that. Mr. Yeah, and, I, and I met, I did meet, meet with Karen and kind of went through the whole process with her and kind of got up to speed on what she was working on. So I have at least a general idea of what's going on. Very general. <laughs> enough to be dangerous, right? Not enough to be dangerous, no. <laughs> uh, Don, what you got for us? I seem to always have the most of anybody, I guess. But, um... Well, that's all right. That's why we so <clears throat> far as management plan wise, just to give the board an update. Um, Mike Brown is working on, you know, some of the comments in a final draft. And the next far as management meeting is going to be on 1017. And the hope is, is to eventually move from that meeting into a public forum. Um, to tell people, you know, bring people up to speed with what's happening. So I'm, I'm not sure is that would that be here at a select board meeting? Well, that's, or that's, that's what we wanted to see if it should have a special meeting or just at a select board. Probably at a select board meeting, yeah, right? I think it'd be fine. Sure. Yeah. So that was just to give you a little update on that. Um, as far as the sidewalk scoping study that I mentioned in the last meeting. Um, I would say it's the meeting got changed with the, you know, the monthly meeting is now on 1013. It's a Zoom meeting that I have with Chris Hunt and yeah. Emily Lewis from the engineer, engineering firm. So on 11-6, there'll be another update meeting, and I guess 11, you know, that would be at a select board meeting. And you'll try to get members or people? Yeah, we'll, we'll get, get the word out and get people to Zoom in or, or they can come to, you know, I looked into seeing if there was a way to hold it somewhere over in, in that neck of the woods in North Moortown, but I think it's probably just best to do it with here and with Zoom. Yep. So um, on the 1013 meeting, I'll get a better idea from Emily for her presentation and what time, or or maybe we want to give them a time, or, you know. Because we can work around it. Okay. okay. Yep. All right. Um, the Road Safety Committee, you know, uh, we're working along with that. The letter that we all approved last meeting, um, we're working on getting that posted on Front Porch Forum um, for people to be able to, to review and sign electronically. And then um, I was going to talk to Sasha about having a copy here. And there's a copy at the Town Hall. That'll be referenced in the Front Porch Forum um, posting so that people can sign that. And then I don't know. Would I get to? Would we get together with Stefan or, or would would you, Sasha, to, to sort of um, to for the some of the data that the speed rad, radar unit puts out? Um, it's all sent to me, and I have it so I can get it. But to need to coordinate maybe with Stefan where it could be located or whatever, right? I mean, mm -hmm. yep. yeah, yeah. to on. sort of it tie it into. Things. We thought we we could tie it into with what. Mm -hmm. With somewhat what the letter is addressing, so that then the state would see some of the speeds that were. So okay, but the stuff does come yeah. through. Okay. There, there was so the speed trail is down by my house now. I don't know. I know. And <laughs> last night there was a guy on a motorcycle. He was. I, I was going to go down and see what he was getting for speeds because he did it like five times. And, oh. you know, you go down, and I was surprised you didn't hear it screaming. No, I, 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 I heard it. <laughs> yeah, you can hear it. You can hear it on my And I'm like, and you, yeah. and you had heard of me going, and then by the time he's going by my house, he's got to be doing, 
I don't know, 120. I have no idea. It just boom. And it's crazy. So I'm interested to see what kind of high speeds we have on that thing yeah. this time. Yeah. Um, but. <laughs> so that's the uh, that's that. And then uh, I I know maybe Sasha was going to reach out. I tried as a as I bike by on Pony Farm to see the folks living at the corner to see about them coming to a meeting. I and I don't know. I send them a letter. Oh, okay. So. But I'll try to keep an eye out just to, you know, yep. say hello again and ask them. There was a Tacoma, so, like, what? there was a Tacoma right in the road, what day was it? Tuesday, when I came through. Yeah. Like, if you pulled down, you would have had to go around it and just barely get in yep. at the stop sign. So, Sasha, on that, do we, as far as you know, um, or John, I guess, maybe more appropriate, can we have those towed, or what's the what's the law on that? What do we do? I mean, to enforce it. I mean, I don't know. It's nothing we want to do. Yeah, no, I understand. I but know. how do we how do we stop that? Wait a month and tow them. <laughs> what's that? <laughs> Wait a month and tow them when it falls into winter. Yeah, yeah. I, I think once winter comes, yeah. I mean, after we have they them. can't. But they, I mean. They, can't plow with it there, so. And we have, look, we should try to at least have one more reasonable conversation here with them. To yeah, make I'm, I'm going to try. I'll stop and and you know if, when there's a vehicle there, I'll stop and ask them to, to, to come to next week, next the 16th is that next meeting, right? Yeah. 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 And just get it at least. I mean, it just it. come even. At, it doesn't have to be just come at six o'clock. Right. Just come at six. Yeah. Oh, cool. Spend a couple okay. minutes. Yeah. Get them to understand. I mean, look at we're not trying to be jerks here, but it's, it's safety, a safety yeah, issue. It's a safety yeah. issue. And right. Take responsibility. So, okay. And my last item is um, so in the town hall project, I sent you all a um, some bullets on you know the benefits of using a construction manager, and and in that realm, we sent out you know an RFP. We had three contractors respond and came through a walkthrough and then one dropped out so then we got ended up getting two proposals and we did quite a uh a vetting process of weighing up the two proposals which i can share with you all you know i don't like to just send you guys that you know everybody gets so much stuff but obviously i can share it with you what it's needed so um we've we've done our vetting and we've come up with the, the contractor we would, who would be the, the construction manager and also the contractor. They, they end up going as we go forward and we get grants and we go into the construction mode. They're part of the team. You know, this isn't, you hire, as I said in these statements, the construction manager performs many duties between doing some pre-con and pre-design and getting MEP prices and stuff like that. They also segue into the next fit and then doing a hard cost estimate, you know, doing through the CM process going, no, you can do it this way, that way, don't, you can save money doing this, you know, this, this whole process of using the CM. They, um, so then they would then, bid, once we finish this design development, which they would become part of that team, then they do the high price numbers that we need. We need a high number to go to start to fundraise, to start going for grants, identifying the different line items of work. So be that as a, you know, so without getting way, way into the weeds on it, the next phase to have a construction manager in lieu of, remember when we came a long time ago to hire, to do someone to just take the design development drawings that we're into right now and just put it out to a guy who just gives you an estimate. That's like $4,000, four to $5,000. The first phase of using a construction manager who eventually is not only that, you know, they self-perform a lot of the jobs as we get into the construction phase. Their cost is $7,800 to do this first phase of of construction manager. So as I asked before in the meeting, when we hadn't done the vetting yet, was is there a way 
while we're working towards this end of getting final design and final number to go after the you know these two these rather two large grants we're looking at the library one and the um, the Merca one for five hundred thousand um, dollars. Is there a way we could borrow the money from the town in advance and then pay it back when we get a grant? Uh, use some more additional opera money. I remember when we first came in to do this next phase, we, 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 were, we were talking 35, but we decided just to do the 22.5 for the design development. And then we just designated 2,500 to do the truck. We needed to know, we knew we needed to do a survey even back then, but <clears throat> so now we found a way to expedite that. Now the next tricky goal is how do we expedite this next step? I'm short of our, you know, I mean, we are going to do a capital campaign, but we didn't really want to start a capital campaign until we know what the costs are for the project, you know, because then we're going to go for grants, capital campaign, and then hopefully the shit town share won't have to be that much. So that's my today's spiel. So you're looking for 7,500? 78. Or so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, not me, but that project. Right, that's I, mean, I know, I know, I'm just kidding. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know if there's a vehicle that, that the town we could, it could be a loan and then we pay it back when we get the grants. I mean, we're not, there's no stopping now. We're going to do the projects. Gonna, this is our one chance to, to revitalize the town hall with the grant money that's going to be available to, for, for us to get. Um, I was glad to hear Dave say that well, by doing that application, you can still keep yeah. applying for grants. Because when he told me that the other day, I went, what? We've got a lot of grants we're going to be going after. Um, yeah, so uh, unless we take, you know, I mean, I, I, we haven't really done a you know, final we still got some ARCA funds there, but I know we've got a lot of, you know, usage for that, too. Yeah. I mean, especially with the fire. When do you, you need this decision today. tonight, Don? No, no. We could, if we could go to, we said we would either do tonight or the 16th, but by then, yeah, we need to, like, you know, bring them online. Let's, um... Okay. Let's look at to see what we have for funds. I think there's probably funds there. Yeah, it's a small enough. Money. It's a small yeah. enough. But let me let's figure it out okay. between now and the next meeting and where it comes from, whether it's ARPA stuff or whether it, we'll get a budget report to see where um, we're at as far mm -hmm. as our spending and I'm Great. sure between the, the, okay. the departments. Um, I think Don, your intent is to reimburse the town, basically. So we pony up the well, thousand, we and can. unless we don't get any grants to to get the money back, then you're yeah, I mean that would be it would that would be one way, if not the best way, but yeah, if we had we could try to have that in the grant application, this this funding, and then pay it back. I, you know, I don't, I. I yeah, I don't know. Typically they don't. I don't know that. if that can work, Robin, or not. But I, yeah. Well, I mean, project managers should be part of the grant application. Yeah. Oh no, no, that stuff will be. Yeah, the next design part. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think as long as we get the money back, you know. Well, as Tom said, let's see where where, where it lies. Yeah. Okay. And we'll, Great. Uh, but we will vote on it next next yeah. time. Okay. Grants are very touchy. What? Yeah. Grants are very touchy, she mentioned, yeah. just how you... Yes, that's it's very and touchy. You may get $20,000, but if you don't dot one eye and cross yeah, one T, you're only going to get ten. Yeah. And you're probably going to see it in two years. Right. Well, that's why I think we're lucky to have Cheryl Lynn and, and Sasha work on those. Um, constantly with Cheryl and being the manager, because it, it, it's one of those things that you, if you just pick it up once in a while, you're going to miss something. So it's important to have someone that knows what to do with you. Anything else, Don? No, that's it. All right. No. John? No, nothing to, uh, nothing to report. I'm just uh, curious about the, uh, the trail again. Um, 
just talk with my I, I <laughs> am not uh, connected, but I promise you I will um, okay. by the end of the week. Which thing? You uh, know, the, the uh, oh, yeah. 17, okay. Trail 17. Trail 17. Oh. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah it hasn't been a lack of effort. We just haven't hit up. Sasha, did you or you or Cheryl in contact? Um, Guy. Guy? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He appreciated it. Okay, good. And also, did we get the tree down? October 10th. Yeah. yeah. And so, Blodgett must be happy about that, then I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Any update on the grader? Is that kind of any word on that? It left for Bill. Okay, great. Driving up from Central America. That's a long way. So it's on the way up from Brazil. Oh, cool. So where's the ship to anyway? So what's, what's the port? Mm, I don't know. I assumed they were saying, oh, it's going to be a ship to New Jersey. And I was like, they're not going to ship it to New Jersey. <laughs> it's going to cost way too much probably to Atlanta. float it up to New Jersey. Yeah, probably Atlanta, somewhere in Florida. Yeah. Louisiana, somewhere along the coast. And then they'll just drive, drive it up. Or not drive it up, but. <laughs> it'll take a lot That's longer. A big, uh, yeah. We don't want to yank it with miles on it. <laughs> well, you had the warranty done by the time we got here. <laughs> and we also, um, we have a truck coming too at some point, right? I think delays with that. That doesn't surprise me. Anything on, um, the other thing I had from Martin that we didn't get is Sean's truck. Have you heard anything on that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he still doesn't have it, though, does he? I don't know. No. I can ask. I don't think so. No, I mean, two weeks ago, they didn't have an engine on it, so I don't imagine it's changed much. What is this, third time's a charm? Something like that. Martin was getting in touch with manufacturers to see if there's anything else we can do with it. Um, any uh, old business? We have the minutes to go back to, I know, but uh, before we do that, is there anything on the old business that we need to address? They're all good. Um, select board minutes from 918. Make a motion we accept the select board minutes of, what was it, 918? 918. 918, 23. Any um, seconds on that? I can't, I wasn't here. Oh, I'll second. Oh, you you second. can. No. I can't. Sure, you can. No, you, you just. Yeah, you can actually. Oh, yeah. uh, well, I'll second. All right, Don seconds. Any discussion on them? Nothing. All right, so let's go ahead and approve them. If uh, everyone says aye. 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 Kelly mm -hmm. abstains. Mm -hmm. um, new business. Anything new that we have? I think we've got plenty of old. We've got lots of old. All right, so let's go ahead and sign off. Do we have any other things to sign? Um, a warrant. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, we haven't adjourned yet, so oh, just let me finish here with the shot. And then uh, the annual time report, there's a contract uh, for one year or two years, and you know, two years is better. And then I have the travel oh, data. Oh, okay. Thank you for that. So we will, before we leave, we need to go into a little bit of session. So yeah, if you have a couple minutes or real, yes, you may, go ahead. It's just oh, the other business. I was speaking with someone the other day, someone who's lived in the town a long time, and both of us have noticed that the gazebo, and I know the town doesn't own it, um, and then we know that Bill Wilcox <laughs> built it, and it belongs on the land at the post office. Yep. But she and I just thought maybe we would just say something to the select board about uh, it needs repair. Yep. <laughs> and maybe. And it's not, allow us yours, or, it's not the town's responsibility, but if you have any connection with Mr. Wilcox, who I understand now lives in New Hampshire, New Hampshire yep. um, 
maybe a great time to speak to him about maybe fixing it, the roof and the benches inside, and not in good repair. If he can't or won't do it, maybe some fundraising could be proposed. That's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Thank, yeah. yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for <laughs> All right, so um, now we need to go into executive session. Um, so I would move to, I think John's going to do it. I guess so. Yeah. Good night, John Bath. Good night, Bob. Good night, Bob. Good night. Nice to see you guys. Did you sign that on anything? Yeah, yeah. Talk to you. Okay. All right, so we're just, okay, John. So I'll, I'll uh, move to go into executive session uh, for section 313 of the Vermont statutes. Um, and we're looking at uh, uh, point number one, which is uh, the premature general public knowledge would clearly place this body uh, or a person at a substantial disadvantage. And um, this will be under that. Would be, just I think, where we would put this. Well, I would say that it would be under contracts. And uh, this has to do with the Charles O. Davis Fund. Second. Sorry about that. Well, that's all right. No, you get it right. It's, it's important to get it right, John. That's why I asked you to do it. <laughs> and I appreciate it. All in favor vote aye. 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 